college football global imperialism, or as I like to call it, world domination. <laughs> In this episode, we will determine who is crowned champion of Antarctica. But first, here's how this miniseries is going to work. Every conference will be randomly assigned to a continent or ocean. From there, each conference will engage in intercontinental warfare. The victor of each conference will compete for world domination. Each continent has a unique set of challenges that each team has to play by and overcome. In the playoffs, you bring out the big guns. For every win the victor has in the regular season, they get to steal that many players from defeated teams in the conference. Group of five conferences gets a times two multiplier. In addition, the champion for every continent gets two 99 overall campus legends to join their team in the playoffs. One for offense, one for defense. So comment down below some of your all-time favorite campus legends for your favorite schools. And if your school wins the continent, you may just see that legend in the World War finale. First, let's figure out what conference is playing for what territory. Let's spin and determine who competes for North America. Sun Belt Conference representing North America. Of the remaining conferences, it looks like the Big Ten. The Big Ten slated for South America. Let's jump over to Europe. That is Mountain West football. Bring in the blue and the Pac-2 with them. The Big 12 is headed to Asia. The map is beginning to shape up. Jumping down to Africa, the Africa runs through the ACC. Kicking it down to Australia, the conference competing for the glory is Conference USA. Only three conferences remain and one landmass is left. That is Antarctica and it's going to fall to the SEC. So there you have it. Part one of global imperialism is going to run through the SEC here in a conquest for Antarctica. So the American Conference will square off for the Pacific Ocean and the MAC will square off for the Atlantic. With that sorted out, our adventure starts at the bottom of planet Earth in Antarctica. A continent made up of mostly ice, it's fair to say that it's cold down here and playing college football is not going to be easy. Here are the Antarctica challenges that we will have to abide by in these intercontinental matchups. 10 minute quarters, only snow games, only night games. Every game will be played at a neutral site. In fact, it'll be at the coldest field in all of college football, which happens to be Laramie, Wyoming. Losing teams get a cold spell ability where they can freeze the winning team for one drive of their choice in the fourth quarter, forcing them to sub in second string offense or defense. The SEC was randomly mapped out here to Antarctica determined by the wheel. And speaking of the wheel, let's spin it to determine who will be the first aggressor in this war for the world. It's the Mississippi State Bulldogs. Mississippi State is going to have to go up north, and that means their border is going to clash in a matchup against the South Carolina Gamecocks. Conditions are brutal out here as this is what it would be like on Antarctica. You can hardly see the field with this much snow, but we do know that Spencer Rattler and the South Carolina Gamecocks are driving down the field into the red zone. Down by 12, this is an extremely important possession here with only six minutes to go. He's going to go for the end zone. He's got a man in the snow. That is a big six, number 80 nine rattlers had a day three ints and extremely low completion percentage south carolina has just decided to use their cold spell ability since they are the losing team here in the fourth quarter forcing mississippi state to go to second string here in antarctica if you don't recall the losing team gets the ability to freeze the opponent forcing them to go a second string but it only lasts for one drive and it looks like the second string offense is going to get the first down gamecocks trying to bet on their defense to get the stop so the offense gets another crack third and eight can the backup quarterback deliver a ball here he throws one out complete but it's well short so the cold spell ability pays off for south carolina but it's third and seven and rattler has got to convert this play he's going deep and he's got a man what a catch all the way past midfield insane in the membrane with only two and a half minutes left this would be quite the comeback but he is decked and mississippi state defense all over him that sack led to a huge fourth down but south carolina chooses to punt it and there's a good chance they may never see this ball back. First string offense back in the game. Halfback draw. It's going nowhere. So South Carolina will get a shot. The clock is ticking. Rattler is moving the ball down the field. He's got a wide open receiver all the way down to first and goal. Rattler looking to pull out the biggest play of his young life. He does find a man for a touchdown. Eddie Lewis. I cannot believe what we are witnessing here. Spencer Rattler was able to drive his team down and take the lead. What a fourth quarter turn of events. It's up to Will Rogers and the Bulldogs who find a wide open man. He's going down the sideline line huge 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 play for as much snow as falling in this game the offenses are not stuttering one bit nine seconds left he keeps it he flicks it out to the running back he's open for a game winning touchdown seth davis are you not entertained in the first game of the entire global imperialism conquest 
Sit back, relax. It's going to be a good one. What a freaking game. All right, we got first blood. Mississippi State strikes down the Gamecocks. And with that, the Gamecocks lose their territory. Mississippi State expands. Let's see who's got next on the frozen tundra. It looks like the new SEC team, the Texas Longhorns are up. Gonna have to go left and up a bit, which at that trajectory means a in-state battle between the Longhorns and the Aggies. Quinn Ewers and the Texas Longhorns up by three over the Aggies in the Lone Star Showdown. This one is a heavy snow battle, something they're not used to in Texas, but that touchdown gives them a big cushion. Aggies have not been able to muster up anything in the fourth quarter. They still have the cold spell ability, so I'd imagine they use it here next. But the unfortunate reality in this situation is that there is little time left, so they have to score twice, and this stop will at least give them a chance. With second string defense, and in theory, the offensive line should get a break, receivers should get more separation, but when you're bricking those, that ain't helpful. Big third down here, dropping back with the slip screen. It's not gonna work. This is the game on the line for Texas and m going up against second stringers, and they cannot get a first down. Longhorns defense holds, and that's gonna do it. Hook them horns, they're moving on. Aggies take the fall. Longhorns swoop in and take that land. It is going to fall in Georgia's lap to determine what they do next. And their conquest is going to take them to the right. That spells like a heavyweight matchup, Georgia versus Alabama. Alabama up by 10 over the Bulldogs and threatening to do more here. First and goal, Milrow going up across the middle. He's got a man. He's open for six. Big touchdown for the tight end. And no, this is not deja vu. Milrow is back for a second time. Georgia stalled out. Alabama drove right down the field. First and goal, Milrow. Read option. Up the middle, touchdown. They are doing it here in a big way in Antarctica. There's not even really a point right now for Georgia to use their cold spell ability. They're getting destroyed. Alabama in this game has 19 more first downs than the Bulldogs. With just a few minutes left in this one, Carson Beck looking for anything at all. He's had a horrific game, three picks. That's what I was about expecting in the Antarctica weather, so it's impressing me that Milrow and Ewers are doing so good. And that's the final. The score remained the same. Alabama handle it. Not often you see this, but Georgia a one and done in college football imperialism. Spinning the wheel to determine who goes next, the LSU Tigers are going to have their crack at it. Let's send the Tigers to the right and down a little. Down into the right a little means Alabama's back on the clock. What Alabama is doing is impressive. This time in a position to score, Miller just takes off. First and goal, they're about to score again on LSU. 40 rushes, 40 passes. Alabama once again showing why they are a dominant force, and that's a big touchdown. Heavy snow, freezing temperatures, no big deal here as Daniels just throws a awful pass. That's picked. But the way Alabama is rolling right now, who can stop this team? Third and inches, just a simple handoff. That'll do. Second and goal, receiver in motion, just another handoff and a stiff arm fighting forward. That almost was a touchdown. I feel like a touchdown here pretty much seals the game. Dan, he's passing. Oh my gosh, I thought he was going to run it, but Prentice does the rest. Jaden Daniels without his star offense alignment, Will Campbell moving down the field, seeing what he can do. It feels a little late in this one, but hey, funnier things happen. We'll see what happens here. That handoff was not really ideal. Fourth and four. This is massive. He's got no one across the middle. Alabama turns it over. LSU defense in the blistering cold was no match today for Alabama's offense, regardless of the stops here. All wraps now Milrow back-to-back -back impressive performances therefore LSU loses hold of their little island and Alabama's territory expands let's see if anyone else can go on a run and threaten Alabama's reign it's gonna fall back on the Longhorns this time the new kid on the block is gonna have to go up and up is right into Alabama's territory again Alabama getting tested for their third time in a row this game has been back and forth and it's the first time Alabama is back against the wall settling for a field goal attempt in the blistering cold and snow he He's got it. The Texas Longhorns are proving to be a formidable foe. And oh my goodness, a one-handed interception. What? That was insane. Can Alabama keep the momentum and get a first down? Oh no, it's fourth. Longhorns defense steps up. Can't even keep up. This game has changed on the blink of an eye. And Milrow just walks his way into the end zone. They have the lead now. Bama is up with five minutes to go. And oh no, Longhorns are imploding. They fumble in the ensuing drive. Milrow's got him in the goal line. Texas defense defense has to make the stop of a lifetime here. Can they hold Bama? No, they cannot. The Longhorns have decided to activate the cold spell ability, forcing Alabama to go with the second string defense. They are hoping the Longhorns get some gash plays here with the second string defense in. And so far, this play is proving to be a big one. 
Let's go. Wow. Jonathan Brooks stays up. Now that's how you flip the field. Quinn Ewers goes back to work, finds a man for a first down. I was going to say before that last gash play that Alabama's second string defense is probably still pretty good. One mission here for Texas to score six, and that's first and goal. This has to go through here, or it's all over for Texas. Ewers looking for someone, anyone. He's got a man no it drops out the second string defense holds and Alabama's gonna win wow Alabama has been put to the test and they have come through every single time so far Texas put up a valiant fight but unfortunately for them they lose the land and they lose Antarctica ground as Alabama has quite a big chunk who's gonna be next will it possibly fall in Alabama's lap again this time Vanderbilt is up can the Commodores shock the world let's find out they're gonna have to go up against the Mississippi State Bulldogs it was a battle through the first couple quarters but oh man maybe it's gonna be a battle again with that pick Vanderbilt intercepts massive interception for the Commodores as they're down by two touchdowns with eight minutes left and they turn the ball right back over to the Bulldogs. Mississippi State, third and 10, right back around midfield after that turnover off the back foot. Are you kidding me? Another turnover. It's been turned over back and forth like a tug of war. It's fourth down for Vanderbilt. They don't have to throw an int to turn it over. If they don't get the first down here, it's going to convert and they don't get it. Another turnover. Vanderbilt decides this is the time to use the cold spell ability, forcing Mississippi State to put in their second string defense. And look at that run. That's a big 13 yard gain. Maybe this will give the team the spark they need to score and hopefully get momentum on their side. But the defense for the Bulldogs gets a hold. Practically comes down to this play right here. It's a handoff draw up the middle. It works. Now Vandy gets into the hurry up offense, going to get a quick snap here, looking for a shot, any receiver at all. He's going to scan. He's going to go over the middle. That's the running back once more. Swan drops back. Number five finds the quick slant and that momentum from the tackle carried him to the first. Hurry up offense and a fresh set of downs. He's going to find someone. He's going to go out. It looks like the receiver, Will Shepard, makes his 12th catch, but so far hasn't been enough to give his team the lead. And shout out to you, Will Shepard. I see you out here making all these snags. He helped build our college football team when we DM'd college football players to build a squad, and he came through clutch. What is clutch, though, right now is Mississippi State's second team defense as they're holding strong, and they complete the defensive stand. Turnover. Bulldogs win. Literally just victory formation here, and that's a wrap. Bulldogs survive another day. With that outcome, Vanderbilt is no more. Mississippi State continues their ride. With the remaining teams, we got Missouri is finally on the clock. Tigers looking for their first bit of action up and to the right a bit. And the team that borders them most directly in that direction is Auburn. So we got Missouri, Auburn. Tiger v. Tiger action in this one. We'll get to see who is the superior Tiger team. Mizzou currently up by seven, but can't get the first down here. Auburn defense all over this one in the snow making the stand in the blink of an eye Auburn scored and they're back to do it again they had the one trick wonder working third and goal Auburn with the option play QB keeper he should have flicked it out more than likely he stuffed fourth down despite a blank showing in the bottom right this is a third down opportunity for Mizzou Auburn gets the stop Mizzou down by three they use the cold spell ability Auburn has second team defense in and Cook is going to scramble with just four minutes left looking for a first down and a sustained drive here crucial third down here tight end in motion it's an option once more they love going to this play and Brady Cook gets just enough just about in field goal range here but nothing is guaranteed with the snow that's falling down another option here Cook not going to go anywhere this time. Tigers were not fooled. Jalen McLeod, the backup with a big play there and another huge play from the backup defender on the defensive line. That's going to be Cook on the ground in pain. Because of that, Tigers forced to go for three. This is tough. He nails it. It's all tied up. Auburn Tigers here with a big third down looming. They go for a big one. Not quite all what they needed. With just, with just one minute, 40 seconds left, it's a Wildcat option play that scores a touchdown. Cody in the end zone. Tigers up. Despite the scoreboard being close, the Auburn Tigers have been four for 18 on third down conversions, whereas Mizzou is out gaining them in yards almost times two. This is it. Fourth down, 45 seconds to go. He takes off to scramble and the defense holds just short and Mizzou is going to walk out on top with a victory. Tiger v. Tiger. Mizzou is the superior one in this matchup. Auburn safe travels back to the mainland. Mizzou, your time in Antarctica is not finished. 
Let's keep running that wheel back. We got the Razorbacks up next. These hogs gonna go up and to the left and that's gonna match them up toe to toe with the Volunteers. Tennessee is on a mission here. Fourth quarter action, looking to score some more, already up by 15. Joe Milton and the Volunteers said, hold on now, let me cook. Arkansas was in it close in the beginning. He has all day and when you have all day, that's easy touchdowns. Arkansas down in desperation mode with just a flop in a turnover here. Tennessee's getting the ball back. This game's pretty much wraps. Already up by 22 with just five minutes to go. Fourth down. Tennessee shows no mercy here. Slip screen. It was all covered up. And well, Arkansas is getting the ball back. I don't know if that means much. Razorbacks getting close to the red zone here. QB steps up, keeps it. Number one is going to go for a big run here. Bouncing off defenders. Big play. Now the Hogs are definitely in the red zone and looking to opportunize. Wow. Good catch. Despite throwing for 400 yards, somehow they're down by 22 points points but this panned off and six will at least help him get one step closer but that last touchdown by Arkansas was all in vain because Tennessee here is calling game and well hold on now nah who am I kidding Arkansas really never stood a chance even with that turnover fourth down here he got it nope receiver dropped it the cold negative 20 degree chill too much so Tennessee really not in jeopardy throughout this game they're gonna hold on and win congrats to Tennessee as they knock off Arkansas and continue the dream getting down to crunch time some teams are yet to play and one of those teams is the new guys Oklahoma Sooners on the clock where will they go first they're gonna have to go to the left and look at those borders Alabama is back to defend their honor on the gridiron what is this I see Oklahoma up by a touchdown third and 11 it's no good there Alabama's getting the ball back but we have a leader in the fourth. And really, Oklahoma defense can be credited right now holding Alabama to two for 10 on third down conversions. Not holding them there, but so far the story's been good defense. Maybe I spoke too soon as they're already at first and goal in a wide open touchdown. Let's tune in and see if the Sooners can keep their momentum going and that strike will get them past midfield. 27-27, read option. Gabriel keeps it and gets decked. And yes, I know Dylan Gabriel is an Oregon Duck this upcoming season. There wasn't an updated roster, but what a catch. Oh my goodness, Drake Stoops. But yeah, transfers guys are not all in here that was an unbelievable catch that the Oklahoma receiver had while it was mid commentary getting him to first and goal now second and goal sending a tight end out wide let's see if he can drop back and pass and find him that's a touchdown for Jaden Gibson Oklahoma on top the tide cannot be stopped on offense it's a rare sight I should say and that fumble is an anomaly if there was ever a time to make a mistake it was not there and if there's ever a time to capitalize it's right now come on Sooners Sooners settling for three on the fourth down he actually nailed it Alabama with the cold spell ability since they're down by two possessions they put in Sooners second team defense in he can go nowhere the second team defense for the Sooners coming up huge this drive Bama is down by 10 and they're forced to punt this is an upset in the brewing right now this is crazy fourth down Sooners have to punt but they effectively burn all of Alabama's timeouts this could be wraps hold the phone only 20 seconds later Alabama is all the way down into the red zone and scores a touchdown oh my goodness you got to be kidding me so the second string Sooner defense steps up makes the play the first string defense gets gashed and gives up a touchdown that onside kick no good there what a hit stick but that's gonna be game the Sooners do the spectacular here upsetting Alabama Alabama was on a roll defending their honor for the fourth time this time it proved to be too costly Sooners step out of their shadow and down a big one there and wow what a game changer Alabama was looking like a strong favorite in this one now it's anyone's game Florida Gators up next let's see where the Gators got to go and Oklahoma there's a reason you don't see Gators swimming around Arctic cold waters but maybe the Florida Gators are a different breed in this one they're up by four looking to upset Oklahoma Florida Gators want to stand tall and make their statement big third down for both sides it's a handoff the Gators do not hold by a mere inches. Second 11 going across the middle. Brick hands. It's cold out there. I don't blame him. Third and 11. Who's going to be a hero? Is it going to come from the offense here for the Sooners? Is it going to come from defense? The defense says hello. And the Gators make a big pick. Gators has been a lot of ground and pound, but they do an option pass. Falls to the ground. It only took two minutes for the Gators to give up the I was about to say give up the lead, but they pick it off big turnover in the end zone defense makes two ginormous stands and that first down will give them a little bit of room to breathe another important third down here with only five minutes left he's gonna sling one to the sideline contested play incomplete 
Oh my gosh, it was a fumble on the handoff, and the Gators' defense comes up huge. With how big the defense is playing, it would be crazy not to see Florida win. Definitely can't discredit Oklahoma's defense as well as they're stepping up in big moments, but the turnovers have been costly. Florida statistically a lesser firepower of a team on offense, looking to get it done against a high-powered offense of Oklahoma. First and 10, handoff, the running back throws a stiff arm down. It's not going to go anywhere. Third and eight, big play looming here. 15, looking to go anywhere. He couldn't find anyone. He's dropped for a massive sack, gets back up, gets sacked again. Number 29's already missed one field goal. Can he cash in? He does, up by seven. The Gators have a one touchdown lead. Once again, the task falls into the defense's hands and they make the stop. It's a fourth down coming up. So far this game, the Gators are cold-blooded, swimming well in frozen tundra waters, but that play is going to convert for the Sooners. Just a minute left. It's crunch time here. He's going to go for a big one. Defense was all over it. A minute left in this one. Sooners going for a deep one. No one home. Third down. What can they do? He's got a wide open man on the outside. First down. Chains keep moving. Already into the red zone here. Hand off. That's a gash play for another first. All they got to do is cash in. Hand off. Sniffed out. Gator defense clamping down. Defense needs one more miraculous play to pull out of their belt, and it's not going to happen. Touchdown Sooners. This one's going to OT. Third and five. Gators start off with the ball here. It gets dropped. The Sooners sack him. They just got to be as conservative as possible, not looking to turn it over and get as close to the end zone as possible. Game ending field goal. Sooners win, and they survive Florida's tenacious defense. For a second, it looked like the Gators were going to walk away with it. For them, their journey ends for Oklahoma their story is one step closer towards world domination. Spinning the wheel of remaining SEC teams, we got the Kentucky Wildcats getting their first opportunity. The Wildcats are going to have to go down into the right a bit. And to me, that direction is more right than down, so it's going to be a Kentucky-Tennessee matchup. Kentucky-Tennessee in a battle here, and the quarterback for Kentucky just tucks his head and runs down the sideline. He has got a gashing play all the way into the end zone. Wow, he is doing it all by himself this game. He has three rushing touchdowns already. Now third and goal. Can they complete the drive with six? They cannot. Oh, man. Number six dropped the bag. He dropped his money. Man was wide open in the back of the end zone, so they settle for three, and they get the three-point lead. Wildcats do eventually get a second chance here on offense, but the fourth down play is snuffed out, and that's going to be a Tennessee turnover. Tennessee is looking to get some luck of their own, and that's a play that'll get the chains moving. Hand off to the running back. He is off to the races. Just about five minutes to go. Milton going to the end zone. He's got a wide open receiver that just stops and stands there. He just wanted to take in the sights and sounds. All Squirrel White had to do was move his legs past the end zone line, but Milton says, I'll do it myself. QB keeper, touchdown, Tennessee on top. Well, it's all up to Kentucky's defense here. Three minutes left. They need to stop Tennessee from driving down this field. And clearly that's not working very well for them. Half pack screen. He's got some blockers in front of him. Touchdown volunteers down by two possessions. Kentucky uses the cold freeze ability, bringing in second team defense for Tennessee. Let's see if that pays off as he gets a monster reception. Barry on Brown with the acrobatic catch going back to work across the middle. Got some space. They're starting to move. Leary throwing for almost 500 passing yards in the blistering cold. Kentucky currently in line to drop this one, but hats off to Leary, man. Almost 500 passing yards in three rushing touchdowns, 80 rushing yards. Fourth down, opting for the field goal to make it a one possession game. Now the field goal is good, down by eight. They need this onside recovery, but Tennessee is all over it. Vols need a first down handoff. It's nowhere. Kentucky did the dang thing, and with no timeouts, they're going to have an opportunity to drive down down this field. Stuttering in the back of the end zone, dropping back on fourth and 10. It's no good. Turnover. Tennessee wins. What a back and forth offensive shootout. Heartbreaking for Kentucky fans, encouraging signs for volunteer fans. And then there were five. The Sooners are back up. Really making the Sooners work hard for this one today. They're going to have to go up into the right. That means we got Mississippi State, Oklahoma up next. Oklahoma trying to run away from Mississippi State in this one. The read option, 4-6, touchdown Sooners. Down by 18, all the way back into their own red zone, and they pitch it out to the running back. Big play. Keep in mind, Mississippi State still has the cold spell ability, and they run over that defender for touchdown. We all thought for 
for a second this game had potential, but no. Oklahoma had other ideas. They just blew Mississippi State out the water, scoring literally every time they touched it. Wasn't even much of a drive or nothing. Just like that, Mississippi State in their run comes to an end. Oklahoma continues. A heavy favorite to take the continent. The Sooners still have the Volunteers, the Rebels, and the Tigers in their way. Let's see what the wheel chooses. It's Oklahoma back on deck. Face to the right. And in that direction is the Volunteers. Down by 17, it feels like Tennessee is not going to be the team that can put an end to the Sooners' reign as they keep padding it on, going for the end zone first and goal. A touchdown here puts up the Sooners by a lot, and there it is. That's about 24 points now. Third and 19. The Volunteers need a big play here, a miracle, anything, and that is the opposite. That's a curse. On paper, Tennessee and Oklahoma pretty evenly matched up by college football revamp standards, so surprised to see such a blowout. And even though there's six minutes left, that is all she wrote up by 30 now. That's back-to-back -back games. The Sooners have dropped over 50 points, and this is getting ugly. Milton for pride, down by 31. Fourth down, can they convert? Nope. Unfortunately for Tennessee, their story comes to a close, but Oklahoma is this much closer to continental supremacy. Will Ole Miss or Mizzou swing in and get a dub, but Oklahoma is back to the test. If Oklahoma wins it all, they've really proved it by playing so many games. Down and to the right, well, Ole Miss is up first. Ole Miss looking to take their shot at the crown down by four with four and a half minutes to go. That play's going nowhere. Can Dart and the Rebels dial up the right play here? They need a first down conversion. Dumping it out. That looks like it's going to get the room they need for the first. Jackson Dart having a rather pedestrian day here against the Sooner defense, but he can turn it all around with, uh, wow, that was scary. Almost picked off on that last one, but it's a third down. Looking for the first. That's going to do it. Nice play. Ole Miss keeping the dream alive, handing it off to a receiver there on that play only three yards the important thing is Ole Miss doesn't get too cute they just go for fundamental football once again I digress fundamental football is rather hard in the freezing cold but what a play there first and goal with two and a half minutes handoff up the middle falling forward touchdown the Rebels have a lead never count out Oklahoma we've seen them with their back against the wall many times and oh my goodness you can count them out now that pick six was huge my goodness Prince that pick six puts the Sooners behind the eight ball down by 10 points. They use the cold spell ability for the first time, I believe. You already know what that does to the opposing team's defense, giving the Sooners an advantage on this drive and this drive only and going for it all almost picked off. Sooners scrambling, looking for something to go their way as they've been steamrolling everyone else up to this point. Clock is ticking, 50 seconds to go. They got the man on the slant. He breaks free of the defender. The backup could not tackle him. That's first and goal. Last stop costed Oklahoma a timeout at the least. They're at the one. Can they cash in? Going for a quick slant. It's no good. Third and goal. Trying again. Dropping back. Going for his man. He's got it. That's a touchdown. Fourth passing touchdown this game for Dylan Gabriel in an onside kick. No good. Ole Miss should walk this one out. Ole Miss has done it. They have slain the giant. Oklahoma has fallen, and Ole Miss is one game away from continental victory. Oh, how the turntables have turned. Ole Miss breaks free of their cage and makes a statement in their debut, knocking out the Sooners and claiming the most land. I don't even need to spin. It's an Ole Miss Mizzou showdown for Antarctica. Everything is on the line in this game. The SEC and Antarctica will run through the victor here. Man, oh man, Ole Miss is on a roll right now, up by 25. I think Mizzou is not going to have enough in the tank here with just nine minutes to go. I think no matter what they do, ability or not, it's all in vain as Ole Miss has been too much. First in goal, read option, Cook looking to keep this one itself, sheds the defender, that's six, but it is a little too late in my opinion. Jackson, Dart, and the Rebels taking precious time off the clock. It's third and eight, going for it all, and they've got it. Touchdown, that is a dagger and a dagger in the snow nonetheless. Instead of a dagger dagger, I guess you could say it was an icicle dagger. Haha. <laughs> but hold on now. Mizzou's trying to tell me something here. They want back in this game. They're looking to cash in, hand off up the middle. That extra push was all he needed. Touchdown, Mizzou. Wow. Okay. Okay. We got a game. Oh my goodness here. Brady Cook and the Tigers driving down the field going for a big one. He's got it. Touchdown with a minute 40. They have become a comeback team. I'm literally this close from about eating every word I said and dart finishes it off presumably with that first down. Wow. Rebel fans can breathe a sigh of relief, but Mizzou gave one heck of a fight.
That is going to be the ball game, but Tigers give everyone a scare. And as the final seconds dwindled in that game, it is official. Mizzou is no more. Old Miss has claimed Antarctica and will represent the SEC in the global tour for world domination. And that's where I need you to come in clutch here. Leave a comment down below with two all-time campus legends from Old Miss, offense and defense, and the comment with the most upvotes will be added to the global tour. Additionally, since Old Miss won two games to conquer Antarctica, that means they get to steal two players from any team in the SEC. I will make those roster changes and let you all know in the next one. In the meantime, drop a like, hit that subscribe button, turn on the post notification bell because you're going to want to be here next week when we continue our world conquest.